Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. The Snake Bites death match is over. The polls are closed, the votes have been counted, and the people have spoken. Will it be boas or will it be ball pythons? You're watching Snake Bites. Okay, so for a recap, guys, we put together a contest called the Snake Bites Deathmatch, where we pit different types of snakes together to find out what you guys think is the most popular snake in the pet trade. And in the end, it came down to ball pythons and boa constrictors. And I'm telling you what, this was way closer than even I expected, but a narrow victory from 547 to 515 it was ball pythons, everyone. But because boas did so well, we're gonna go ahead and feature them in a show next week. But this week, it's all about ball pythons and why they're one of the most popular pets in the pet industry. Because that wasn't always the case, believe it or not, 20 years ago, ball pythons were considered garbage animals. Hardly anyone wanted them because the only thing you could really get were big, wild-caught females, just like this animal here, even though she is captive born. She's just a big female. And the old wild-caught animals were always just really terrible. They hardly ever ate, and when they did, it was typically only things like gerbils, which cost an awful lot of money. And no one even thought about breeding them, because after all, they only have four to six eggs, maybe eight if you're really lucky. And they were coming in dirt cheap, and everyone just kind of looked at them as an animal that wasn't even worth keeping. But then something dramatic happened, and they started to produce captive babies. And once that happened, wow, you realize that these animals were nothing but really cool and really easily kept animals in captivity. Starting with husbandry, which is something that really sets ball pythons apart from most other snakes. For example, enclosure size. They don't move around a whole lot, so a smaller enclosure, which is obviously cheaper to keep as well as to buy, is perfect for ball pythons. Not all snakes do really well in rack systems, but it's perfect for a ball python. That's not saying you have to keep them in a rack, but if you do keep them in a vivarium, you want to keep a small hide box because they really prefer tight spots, which again means that it's really easy to keep clean. They're one of the easiest maintenance snakes that I work with. Probably one of the most significant things that really has propelled ball pythons to such popularity, unlike the wild-caught females, captive bred animals feed extremely readily. So we talk about ball pythons on this show a lot, but according to you guys, that's what you guys like best. Now we want to know what is your favorite ball python morph of all time. Leave a comment below and let us know what you think. One of the things that certainly make ball pythons one of the coolest snakes out there is their temperament. They're just such placid animals. After all, you don't see Chewy getting bit in the show by ball pythons, right? That's because we'd have a hard time finding one that would actually bite them. Sure, the babies every now and then take a strike at me when I'm talking. A lot of that's because of my hand motions. They kind of freak out. But as they get bigger, you can see they're just extremely placid animals. And you know what? They're not fast-moving animals either. So for someone that's not as comfortable with snakes, it kind of works out really well because you don't want a squirmy worm that's going to kind of freak you out. So they're really just incredible when it comes to that. Another big attribute is, of course, their size. This is a pretty impressive snake. It's pretty girthy and it looks pretty cool, but it's not so big that one person can't handle it. And certainly nothing that you have to worry about your household pets getting eaten or anything like that. So they're kind of the perfect size, big enough to be impressive, but not too big to be scary. The final piece of the puzzle that really catapulted ball pythons to the popularity that they are right now is, of course, the ease of breeding. Now, take a male like this pastel soul sucker. He can actually breed at about six months of age, about 500 grams. So it's really a quick thing to get a project going, which makes it really attractive to breeders like us. Sure, a female is going to take up to 18 months or even three years to breed. But again, some projects can really move along quick, which means that it's really cool to get new mutations. And speaking of mutations, worldofballpythons.com has cataloged over a thousand morphs of ball pythons. That's right, a thousand morphs. That's a whole lot to choose from. So basically, there's a ball python for anybody at all, from a normal ball python at $40 or an entry-level pastel ball python morph at maybe $75 to $100, all the way up to $50 or $100,000 for one snake. I want to show you guys a few of those really cool morphs.
There's really a ton of reasons why ball pythons have become such incredible pets and so sought after in the reptile pet trade. But the bottom line is, I just think they're incredibly cute. How can you not love that little face? All right, guys, here we go again. I'm looking for a general manager for the shop. Basically, I've narrowed it down to you two guys. But honestly, I can't decide on my own. So I'm going to go ahead and put it to a vote to everyone in the shop. Basically, I'm giving you guys a week to go around and convince not only me, but all your co-workers to see who would be the best manager. I want to keep the campaign clean. Basically, just show me what you guys got. So, George, what makes you the best candidate for general manager? Because I'm awesome, I take care of shit, and I'm a gangster. How does being a gangster uh, make you a good general manager? Because if somebody acts up, and I take people's money so we can get some more money to get rid of So what do you think of your opponent, Chewy? Oh, that guy's got no chance against me. Nobody stands a chance. I'm the winner. I'm not even gonna worry about it. It's like, I'm already picking out my furniture and my new clothes. And what am I gonna say to everybody? You realize you don't get an office, right? I'll make one. So uh, what do you think of your opponent, George? George? I don't think of George. He's out of my mind all day. Look at me. So why should someone vote for you then? For me? Because I'm strong. I'm honest. Look at his face. I'm not creepy. I wear shirts, shoes. I don't run around like a freaking animal all day. I'm suave and debonair. Why not love me? Love me. Democracy is all about the people. I figure I need to get out there and press the flesh and let people know that George is the person for you. Let's go. Vote for George. Good luck. Vote for George. Shake. 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 Vote for me. Sam, the Chewy needs you. What do you want? I need you to be my campaign manager. What do you want me to do? Wash my car, what the f do you think I want you to do? I want you to kiss babies, hug old women, do what campaigners do. Okay, no, no, no. The last time I worked for you, that did not go no, This so will be well. different. How? 20 bucks. 50. Deal. Welcome to the first of three BHB general manager debates. I'm your moderator, Brian Barczyk. The first question is for Chewy. Chewy, what makes you more qualified than your opponent, George? Well, hand dog, I'm older, I'm wiser. Very much older, not much wiser. I don't interrupt. Oh, you're I'm not room. stupid. Listen, I'm not God, stupid. I'm smarter time. than you. You can't big. run. I can run his own by myself you without you. Guys, will you help you? Seriously, you couldn't run my shit. I'll run it in my sleep. In my sleep. I can outrun. Today's voting day. I got up early, made sure I got first in line to go vote for myself. Seems like it's going to be a great day. So, Chewy, how's your election day going? Smooth. I came in, drank some coffee, dicked around a little bit. You know, typical day. So, have you voted yet? I'm going to wait till later. I don't want to seem pushy. Well, the day's finally here to announce the results of the election for the BHB general manager. It was a close race, but in an unlikely turn of events, neither one of you will win. A write-in candidate wins. Sam is now the general manager of BHB. Sam! Sam! Thank you guys for your election and thank you for voting. We'll see you again in four years. Uh, congratulations, Sam. Um, how did you do this? It wasn't really that hard. I voted for myself. I got like two other people to vote for me. I think Chewy forgot to vote, so there wasn't a lot of competition. This election sucked. Very big, rigged up. Yeah, the people aren't ready for a female general manager who carries around flowers and <laughs> Volkswagens. And Runs up trees. Yeah. They're ready for kings, men to run this show. Not princesses, they kiss little toads and Yeah, toad kissers. So what are you guys gonna do? Uh, demand a recount. Killer. This week's comment of the week, the question was, what are some of your expensive hobbies? And Fantasy King 99 said, My favorite expensive hobby right now is tattoos. They are addictive and expensive. I always say a good tattoo isn't cheap and a cheap tattoo isn't good. My wife just got another one on our honeymoon in Amsterdam, so that made it even more expensive. Wow, you guys have a lot of really interesting hobby. A lot of RC cars, paintballs, and even hoop dance. 
But getting back to tattoos, I've actually been thinking about getting a tattoo. I want to know what you guys think I should get for my very first tattoo. I wonder if I'll get in trouble because after all, I kind of have an addictive personality. For the shout out this week, I want to make sure you guys join US Art. They're the organization that allows me to keep doing what we can do. And of course, they protect your rights. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites. This election sucks. Okay. Ready? It's cute. You guys finish each other's sentences. That's not cute. <laughs> <laughs>